this is worthwhile. I remember hearing Malcolm Margolin talking one time. He said that when Europeans started uh, invading North America, that the most densely populated part of North America was the San Francisco Bay Area, all the way up into the Delta. Living was really easy. You could walk out and get shellfish and fin fish and crabs and shoot deer and grind up acorns and all that stuff. Weather is mild. I mean, it doesn't get too hot or too cold. Rain's just about right. I also read one time that there were I believe something like 90 separate languages spoken by native peoples in California. And often people who lived on one side of a hill couldn't talk to the people who lived on the other side of the hill because they didn't need to move very far. And how that causes intellectual and environmental ferment, I don't know, but I think there may be some relation between those historical facts. got to be the most blessed place in the country, if not in the, on, the, on the whole uh, northern hemisphere, uh, in the amount of open space. I, I, when I wrote my book on the geology of the San Francisco Bay region, I was struck again, just um, forcefully, at how much open space, how much nature, how much opportunity we have. You can walk a, a couple of few miles in any direction and hit water uh, or hit a mountain or a park or a forest. The Bay Area has, I think, unique in California, this sense of place. Pe the people, people come here, uh, moved here. I mean, historically, of course, they you know, a lot of people moved here for the gold rush or to, you know, to, to work in various industries. But once they were here. I think they kind of looked around and they said, boy, this is really nice. This is, this is a nice place. Um, and land conservation started here a long time ago in the depths of the Depression. Uh, regional park districts were formed and they and, uh, and some of the water uh, agencies started buying up, uh, buying up watershed land. I came from a mountain inland state. Uh, we didn't have a big, beautiful body of water like this. And I was just struck with its beauty. And so was Kay Kurd, as as Gillick. Uh, we could all look out and see the bay from our homes. We're appalled at this idea of filling it in because to, it could have been made to be just sort of like a river. Already one third had been filled in. Berkeley at that time, we had a plan to fill in almost 2,000 acres. And we so our first goal was to defeat the plan that the city of Berkeley had. The bridge was being built, and they said, Marin County is going to be inundated, and we don't want to be like Los Angeles. So we have to do something. So they started the Marin Garden Club, and they raised enough money to hire the first county planner in the state. Big stuff. So Marin got a general plan. When I was organizing U.S. Wind Power in 1978, uh, my original thing, and when I was still working on the Senate Energy Committee, trying to get legislative support, I went to people like Boeing, who were the leaders in making windmills under government support. They thought it was a joke. Say, hey, Joe, come on here. You got to hear this. This guy thinks they're going to make thousands of windmills. Ah. Uh, they're going to make thousands of woods and put them side by side on ridges. And the wind's going to blow and they're going to make all this power. It's really great. You've got to hear this. You know, it's a big joke, you know. We built 4,000 windmills in Altamont. You know, in 1978, nobody had ever seen two windmills side by side generating electricity anywhere in the world. You know, once you get rid of uh, gold mining as a source and Pollution gets ratcheted back from the delta, from the, uh, the farming community because of changes in the pesticide uh, programs and herbicides and whatnot. And the natural contract contractions by the market, 
of the industrial activities, what you were left with was the bay was run by military bases of which four were on the Superfund list. You know, we're talking about, you know, well over uh, 27,000 acres of land. I'm struck as we talked about it, how much things have changed in 50 years. The whole way that our government works, that our citizens are involved, uh, has changed incredibly. And it happened, interestingly enough, in, in many different areas, parallel. I just want to say what a rich environment in, in terms of people there has been in, in the Bay Area and the passion that people have had to really think through these issues and, and put their life into making things better and I think that that's been that that creates difficulty too because there's a lot of friction in the environmental movement people fight because they're so passionate about it but I, th I think that that's been, for me, the most wonderful thing is, is just seeing how people, regular people in their neighborhoods, um, learn so much. Um, they'll learn all kinds of science, they'll learn all kinds of law because they have to, to protect their kids. People in the organizations at CBE, just wonderful people who work so hard to, to make things better. And that gives me hope, even when I'm really pessimistic about where we are, that it's the people that are going to do it. <laughs>